Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the ATR podcast, where um, we have, and we usually say we have a lot to unpack today, but this is a fairly light off-season show today. But I'm your host, Mark Williams, and I am joined by the man who will have his face on a billboard one day. We make that promise to you, Mr. John Polkowski. Egg free, John. And um, as as we wait for Anthony to uh, reset his modem, uh, then I just dropped my pen. <laughs> I always have to have one of these, so that way I have my fidgeting hands working. But uh, we wait for Anthony to start up. Hey, everybody, starting in. Um, uh, and you know what? First things first. Are you guys a little bit tired or find yourself uh, warring about the Jack Eichel rumors? Well, here's our cold open for you today. Go away. Go away. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you. Where would you be without me? Ellen, well, I saved us. It was me. We survived because of me. Not anymore. What did you say? Leave now and never come back. Oh, leave now and never come back. Leave now and never. Come back! Honestly, that's where I feel right now. It's I've just had I've had so much of this. We need Dragon uh, Ball Z. We we need really need like a Dragon Ball Z like Goku yeah. or Cell like opening for that because the 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 key blasts between the two of them would just be <laughs> weak for this. Well, it's 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 the topic that we kind of start with uh, today, and it's are, are you confident to say the Jack Eichel deal is dead, and maybe the rumors of it are dead, or um, we're just not going to hear about it for another month, and we're just and until training camp opens. Uh, first, I'm going to respond to this and say thank you. This is what we are striving for. Uh, we are striving to be the best content that we can give you guys and be one best show out there with all due respect to the other great shows that are out there as well. So, And, and there's a lot of them. Yeah, and there's a lot of good shows. Um, you've heard us plug their names on here several times, and we will continue to do so because when everyone grows, the hockey community grows in general, and we all, we all eat. We all eat. So, yeah. Um, as for this, no, I don't think it's dead. I, I mean, like, I, I'm going to refer back to John, uh, what Chris Johnson said. The next pressure point is training camp. And everybody that keeps writing about it keeps saying the same thing. They don't, they don't see him going to play for Buffalo this season. They don't see it happening. Uh, I mean, why would you want that in, in training camp? Why would you want that when, with a young core that you're trying to build? Not only that, but... What happens if Donald Fear steps in? That's the next step that I'm waiting for. And, yeah. Um, by the way, uh, we're also being joined right now by the man with more connections than Kaiser Soze, Mr. Anthony Larocco, <laughs> finally coming on in. Or why is I can see it? There he is. I can now hey. see it. Yeah, it's just taking an extra second. Can you hear us, Anthony? Yeah. All right. Still trying to sort that problem out. Um, the first things first, though, but the, you, we were talking about this, and I think I mentioned it on last week's podcast, which is the next step is Donald Fear. If the player is saying, hey, um, I want the surgery, the team is saying no, eventually that's where the union head comes into this. And, uh, again, if, if anybody wants him, they're going to lose him for – weeks to months on end so it's well not weeks obviously months but it's it's just uh, that's why the for the further this goes that that value is dropping like 
do you really think it's and, and unfortunately uh we're still working out the wi-fi issues with anthony right now um but uh that that's what that's what we talked about and i, I at this point if you're buffalo let him get the surgery I don't get why I don't get why they're making uh, a big deal of it. Uh, to tell you the truth, I mean, you you really if you think he's that much of a problem, wouldn't you want him out of your hands? I mean, I, I just I, I don't I don't get it. I, I really don't. And the other thing with it is is that if Donald Fear steps in, this becomes a massive shitstorm, and you you do not want that happening if you're Kevin Adams because this is a bad enough look as it is you have a hard enough time getting players to play here I mean when Taylor Hall signed with the Sabres everybody was shocked because nobody saw that coming nobody saw Taylor Hall going there. and now with this debacle that's going to ruin your relationships with the other uh with with other prospective players going forward and even some of the players in your own system how do you think this looks for Owen Power and his agent yeah, because by the way, that's the other thing too. And I kind of said this all the way back to when uh, the Rangers had Chris Kreider uh, on the trade block slash pending free agent, where it's you don't want to get it to the point where it's like as soon as you're going to cost us any money, we're going to ship you out because then players are going to want out and stuff like that. You got to have a culture. You got to have a culture of winning, and uh, or at least a, a culture that shows everybody that you 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 want to produce the best product that you can. Yeah. Th that's, that's something. Um, Cause Owen power is going to look down the road and say, is that me in four years? Uh, Rasmus Dalina is saying, is that me in two years? Um, is it just an individual situation? That's another one. Um, it's, it's hard to say because the uh, hockey hasn't had a situation like this in, in 20 years where a player is saying my health matters uh, more than games. And um, John, you called it and I'm saying a hundred percent with you that this, um, this is going to get ugly. This is going to be Lindros ugly. So it is. If it, 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 I think it already is, but I mean, of course, as we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to have some top 10 videos by the way for you. Uh, we're going to start with hockey's ugliest breakups. Um, so they'll be coming on the channel soon. Uh, but again, it's just, it, it's just how, how much longer are you really going to see if you can drag this out? But yeah, but we'll I mean, what I don't get is I get that you got to get what you can get for your player, but why was it okay for them to take a subpar return on Sam Reinhardt, but they can't do that for Jack Eichel? I guess because maybe they hit a home run on Rasmus Ristolainen. I, I, but that's what I don't get, though. Like, hey, all right, okay, so you think it's okay because you got a subpar, you you got a little more on Ristolainen than you should have gotten, but it's now okay for them to just deal Sam Reinhardt away for a bag of pucks and and not Jack at Jack Eichel for a slightly lesser return. Like they got they got almost nothing. Like Devin Levi is a good prospect. Mm -hmm. Devin Levi is nowhere near the top of the heap when it comes to goaltending prospects. And, and, and not only that, but the prospects that the Rangers could offer are still going to be better than the vast majority of what teams are actually willing to offer around the league. I don't, I, 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 don't I just, and, and again, I've said this on the previous streams that we've had, and I'll say it again. I've said it in the all. comment section. I've said it everywhere. The players the Rangers can offer right now for Jack Eichel, um, assuming Ryan Strom is in that deal just because to make the money work. But Philip Heedle, um, Matthew Robertson, uh, Lori Payunemi, um, and, or, and, and maybe Zach Jones, Jones. Zach Jones Tom Reunion, uh, they still have their draft picks. There's a package you could get without uh, Kratzoff and or Kako or Lafreniere. And again, but it's just yeah. here's, something, here's something that nobody is talking about. Um, 
the Buffalo Sabres are about $7.3 million under the cap floor. So they have to get back salary in any trade that they make with any team because they have to get to the cap floor. Who are they signing at this point that's available that's going to get them to the cap floor? I, I don't uh, see anybody available. They're certainly not going to get a player. Like, they're not going to sign a big free agent. I can tell you that. No. No, and, and, and the big free agents don't want to sign with them to begin with, partly in due because of this whole thing. Yeah. You're a prospective player. You're looking at this thing. You're saying to yourself, do I really want to sign for an organization that's going to it's going to mistreat the players? I mean, look at the teams. Vegas has moved on. They don't even have – they have to get under the cap after the Datna trade. So Vegas is out. Vegas is out unless they can move about $13 million in salary. And March or so and Smith alone wouldn't be enough to do that. L.A. is out because they went and they got to know. L.A. would have to move about 11 to $12 million in salary to get Jack Eichel in there. And on and Dustin Brown, even if it's Dustin Brown, that's that's not going to be enough. you still got to move another like $6 million in salary at least. So All right. LA's out. By the way, I got to make his introduction again. The man with more connections than Kaiser Soze from the Usual Suspects, Mr. Anthony LaRocco. And we finally got him crystal clear, and he could see us, and we could see him. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Uh, that was that was the best. You know what happened, Mark, when I, when I reset my Wi-Fi, it turned off that, like, um, splitter thing. You got me. So then I had to reconnect that uh, Wi-Fi, and that was the root of the problem. But, Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's so that's a good thing that you're back. And one of the things, Anthony, that we keep talking about with this is um, when when the union's going to step in. And hold hold on, I'm sorry, Alexa, <laughs> shut up. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> really, uh, how the hell did that happen? Um, but we were talking about when the union might step in on the Jack Eichel situation. Um, you know, sorry, I, I was just texting our potential guest. Um, I, uh, I'm not really, sh I think the union will only step in if things really get continue, continue to get ugly with the, with the whole procedure situation, you know, with, with what, um, you know, whether it be the fusion or, uh, the regular, or the spine the artificial replacement surgery that he wants. Um, so unless that gets really, really ugly, I, I don't, I don't know if they're going to step in. I think they're going to, I think they're going to let it play out with Buffalo and Kevin Adams personally, and and see if they could finally move him before training camp. But training camp starts what September twentieth, roughly. So they have another month to move him. Uh, hopefully they they could do that and it doesn't have to you know, taking steps uh, in that direction. But, yeah, I, I'm a believe that the PA is not going to get involved in le unless things really, really go south. And there's a very distinct possibility that they do. Because Adams, instead of trying to to broker a deal, seems like he care he just wants to drag Eichel through the mud. And that that's the vibe that I'm getting from this. Because, like I just asked Mark, why would you take a subpar return on Sam Reinhardt? Trade him for a bag of pucks, and then get rid of, and then ha have to hold Eichel over a barrel. There, there's more than just getting value for him, because teams are probably offering good packages, but they're just not enough for Adams. Because Adams wants to drag this thing out. This is personal. This is not. This is not just about value. This is personal. Now, when you say that it's personal, you think. Um... Uh, that has anything to do with the pressure that he could be under, or you just, just think it's it's starting to get to Bob Bobby Clark versus Eric Lindros territory. I think it's getting to Clark Lindros territory, and from a couple of different interviews that I've I've watched, including Chris Johnston's on Steve Dangle's podcast, and I believe it was either Dreger or Friedman said this on I think it was Friedman on Thirty One Thoughts said that the Bagulas absolutely trust Adams. They trust him with everything. So they're they're relying on him to make that move. So, I, I mean, knowing the relationship that he has after hearing that and 
and seeing the situation, you'd have to you'd have to figure that the owners know that the GM is already in between a rock and a hard place. So I, I can't imagine that being the issue. I, I, I think this has just gotten personal. I, I think the 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 I, when Eichel came out and made those comments about the surgery originally back in May, it triggered the front office. And Kevin Adams wasn't going to stand for it. And Kevin Adams went and attacked him. And this is how it's deteriorated to. So I, I, I don't I don't see a, a good end in sight unless Kevin Adams says, you know what? I just want to end this and I'll, I'll take a lesser return. I'll get rid of the headache. I'll get some assets while I can. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if it's about cash, do you really think – does anybody really think – that Terry Pagula and Kim Pagula are going to want to pay a $7.5 million uh, signing bonus on top of a guy. And then with the cap situation, because they've got to get out of the cap floor, so they've got to take back salary and possibly retain on it. So do you think that Terry Pagula wants to eat all that money on a team that he's clearly shown no initiative to spend on over the years? I don't. I don't see it. He's got to be dealt by next July. And uh, uh, honestly – the best time to do it would be before the start of the season. And if he doesn't do it then, Adams is really screwing himself because it's going to be really hard to make that deal midseason. Exactly. Really exactly. Hard. You can't make that deal midseason. Anthony? Nope. Well, he's definitely being traded by next July. I don't think that's – I don't think that's in question at all. Um, the question now remains is, does Kevin Adams feel it's better for Jack Eichel to get – get whatever surgery he needs to get done, come back, play well, have his value hopefully rise and then trade him at the deadline or trade him before training camp. That's the thing he's probably wrestling with right now. Take, take what he perceives as low ball offers now and not get as much as he thinks he can, or wait till you have a healthy Jack, a healthy Jack Eichel where the acquiring team doesn't have to go through the same situation with them about letting him have the artificial disc, re- disc replacement surgery um, and not have to deal with that headache and feel if they trade a healthy Jack Eichel, it's better for both parties. So I think that's what Buffalo is wrestling with now. Whether or not at this point they they should just, like like I said, let him, let him get healthy, let him play games, let him show other teams he could be productive and he's the player that they expect him to be, and then move him then. Because um, personally, I, you've got to – the only reason why he hasn't been dealt yet is because Kevin Adams doesn't like the offers he's getting and refuses to let his superstar player go for what he would maybe consider peanuts. I think that's the reason why he's not dealt yet. Which again, as I outlined in that trade that I said before, you can get four to five to six assets and they don't have to be the number one things. Uh, They don't have to be the number one draft picks. And no, you you could still rebuild your team and get it all that way. Just, just move on. That's what that's what they're gonna do, and that's what we're gonna do. I'll say so, this time and time again. I'll, 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 I'll this will be the last thing I'll, I'll say because I'm I'm pretty sure Mark, you probably want to move on. We got other things we got to talk about, but um, if if those teams were willing to give up the pieces that Kevin Adams probably wants, then LA wouldn't have moved on. They wouldn't have signed to know. Vegas wouldn't have re-signed Martinez to the contract that they did. They gave him a raise. They wouldn't have given Brassois $2.5 million to be a backup. And they wouldn't have traded for Dadanov because now they have to get under the cap. And a deal would have already been made. And I've seen Buffalo Sabre fans saying, oh, well, we'll just trade him to Winnipeg. You realize that that's not happening, right? Like they think that they have all these options. Uh, the, uh, let me be clear when I say this. Whenever I see comments from the Sabres fans, you have no leverage, absolutely none. None. Like there's, uh, I that that would be like uh, me trying to uh, try to reunite with an ex girlfriend who is currently married and something like that. It's just no, you don't have any leverage. So anyway. What do you think about the culture in, in Buffalo? What do you think about the Jack Eichel situation? Or if we finally heard enough of it for the next month, at least. And um, put it all down in the comments below, guys. I know as always, uh, actually, I got the little gift for it right here. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe.
All right, so we are going to move on, and believe it or not, we're going already to the bar talk segment. I'm going to take a shot on this one. I'm going to say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this. Oh my god. Well, welcome back to the ATR Bar Talk segment, where we're going to gauge NHL topics or our confidence on NHL topics by our choice of drink. Are you not really that confident? Oh, God, I just need a shot. Yeah, you're so so. You're just like, I'll take a beer. Or are you so confident you're buying the entire bar right now? So, um, we're going to start with something that came up yesterday, and uh, it was nice. It was a nice little laugh. The Rangers podcast billboard will affect the. Uh, Jack Eichel situation. I had to read it again because I realized it was effect or effect, but um, that's always a good one. John, start with you. Shot. <laughs> they're not going to do anything. And Based I, on that the was, yeah, no, it, they're not. And it, it was, it was basically a, a, a troll job and kind of like a, a little, uh, little attention grab, if you will. Um, but you know, it's funny. It's clever. I'll 